What's up everyone and welcome back to the third part in our Twitch Plays Pokemon series using Python. And so we just got to the interesting part. First thing I'm going to show is that we have indeed been ponging back to Twitch's ping. You can see it pinged, we printed something out, and then we ponged back, we pinged, we printed something out, and we ponged back. And so... We did all of that correctly, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the if statement up above the else statement like I was talking about before. So we have these two conditions before where if the line is blank, we're just going to move on. If it's not blank and this is true, then we're going to pong back and if it's neither of those which is going to be most things we're going to just print the line and we're going to get the message get the user and then print it out so that's how that's going to work but the next thing we're going to work on is first off we'll go to the command prompt we'll do pip install pi auto gui and what this is going to do is it's going to install PyAuto GUI, which is this really nice tool, which is going to allow us to pass through <coughs> direct inputs. So it's going to help us go from Python to typing in A, B, up, down, left, right, all of that stuff. So I already have it, so it says requirement already satisfied. But for you, it might be different. You might have to type Y to... Um, to accept the changes and everything but after you do that then we're going to do import pi auto if I could type import pi auto GUI and then we're going to make a different function and this one is going to be focused on give me a second this one is going to be focused on the actual controls of the game. So what we're going to do here is another while loop because we want this running continuously while um, while reading the messages. So what we're doing here is basically we're saying if there's an up in the message and we're going to take the lower case of the message because we don't really care about case we just want to care if they said up or not and then we're going to use pi auto GUI for our first time and it does key down and basically this is just this is pi auto GUI's method for pressing a key down and so what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to press the up key down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to reset the message to be empty so it doesn't just keep continuously pressing the up key. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do key up. And we're going to pick up the up key. And so basically what this is showing is that with Pi Auto GUI, we have really granular controls. So we we could potentially just hold down the up button indefinitely, but that's obviously not what we want to do. So we're going to say press the key down, reset the message and then pick the key back up. So it's just a real quick button press instead of just holding it down forever. So basically that's the format we do to do one individual key press and so what we're looking at is if someone types up in their message so they could type something like up dog or something I don't I don't know what they could type in whatever they want containing the letters up and it's going to trigger that message and so that's basically how we do one of those and we're gonna keep doing elif statements and so we're gonna just move on through the next keys and I'm not gonna bore you guys through that entire process because it's a bit of typing I will copy and paste the rest of those in 
so you can see how that's going to look in the end. So basically you can see that I assigned if they type in down, if they type in left, if they type in right, and then I put in A but for the A button, B but for the B button, because I couldn't just do A and B because A is in start and I don't know, I just figured individual letters probably wasn't the best idea. And what I did is I mapped these to the different buttons that correspond to the um, the emulators buttons. So like you see with A button, it's actually mapped to S. That's because the A button on the Game Boy emulator is mapped to the S button. I could just remap it, but I figured it was simple enough to just map it here to the correct buttons and it wasn't too big of a hassle. And so what we do in the last one is we do an else. So if none of these things are true, if they don't type in anything that contains, contains up, down, left, right, A but, B but, start, then we're just going to pass. We're not going to do anything because they didn't pass any of the correct commands. And so this is basically the entire thing we need to do to pass the controls but you're going to notice that we have some problem. This is a while loop. This is a while loop. How are we going to run this code without while also running this code? Because they have to run simultaneously in e order to do anything. And so what we're actually going to do is we imported PyAutoGUI. Now we're going to import threading. And what threading is going to do is it is going to partition our thing into separate groups and then we can run them both simultaneously. So we already have this function, game control. And what we're going to do is this is an entire separate section. And so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to define this as Twitch. This is our Twitch section. And I'm going to take all of this Sorry about that guys, I keep having people coming in and distracting me. So basically where I was at is we're defining this as a function named Twitch. We define this as a function game control. And then what we're going to do is we are going to put some threading in. And so basically the way that works is we're going to make some statement at the end that basically says this and this is kind of just a standard thing I don't know the full history behind this but basically all you have to know is that this statement is going to be true by default so basically what we're gonna do we already imported threading and what we're going to do is this variable equals threading dot thread. Our target is going to be our Twitch function. And then we are going to start that thread. And then we're going to define T2 as threading dot dot thread. Whoops. Thread again. And this time the target is going to be game control. And we're going to do t2.start. And then in theory that should pretty much be it. But we're going to notice one more issue. The issue is going to be that the variables in here have a different scope than the variables in here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our messages. I'm going to set that to global so that that can interact with this function over here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say we're using the, go the global copy of this message here. And then just to be safe, I'm going to define message 
as an empty string up there just in case this runs first then it's not going to get down here and say hey there's no such thing as a message because we already have it defined up here and so that should pretty much be it that will work and so I'm gonna hit control B moment of truth and so we can see it join the chat room we can see if I type hi no errors up here it returned hi got the user got the message and then here's the real moment of truth if we type in a but then you can see that it typed in an S right there and so I'm gonna go onto my laptop for a second and I can type in B but a but B but and then I can do something like I could type in start and what that did is it hit enter because that's what we told it to do and so basically we have successfully gone through the entire process of entering the chat reading the message getting the user getting the message checking if the message is from the server or from a user we are continuously reading messages so as long as people keep typing stuff in it's going to keep reading it we've split it into different threads so that we can continue to read the game controls and so basically at this point you can pass this along to whatever you want I had it set up on a Game Boy emulator to do Pokemon but you could do it on an N64 emulator you could do it on a PS2 emulator you could do it on some other random game and so that's going to give you the power to do just about anything with Twitch plays whatever you want and so that's going to conclude our tutorial series one thing I am going to mention though is that there is about an 8 second delay even in the best case scenario on Twitch so you're going to struggle with any kind of time sensitive games when I first tried to do this I was trying to do this with Pong and it was virtually impossible even if you made it super slow because you have an 8 second delay so the balls hitting on the right side with the opponent and then on the left side your reaction is going to be 8 seconds delayed so it's almost impossible so that's why a game like Pokemon was so successful is you need something like that where it's not time sensitive you can just hit up down you can sit in a corner and just walk straight into a wall for 30 seconds and nothing bad is really going to happen so you have to do those sort of either turn based or just very slow not timing based games so <clears throat> so that's just one thing to consider but with all of these tools you should be able to do just about anything you want with twitch plays type series <laughs>